um, quite up there. Um, so, lots of what I was going to say has already been covered, um, so I won't, I won't repeat, but I've, I've framed it slightly differently and it picks up on some of the stuff I think that both of you said around imposter syndrome. Um, when I was first asked to mentor someone, I really wasn't sure why they had asked me because I, I, it kind of fitted with my general place, which I like to take in life, which was, well, I have got nothing to offer. Uh, although obviously um, I did have something to offer. So I think um, uh, the first thing for me anyway was working out well, what was it that I had to offer. Um, I had stepped back from my operational role in the business I'd hired a manager director to do my job and made myself redundant and I had written about um, that experience and uh, in writing about it lots of people approached me and wanted to know, oh wow, how did you do that? And, um, somebody asked me whether I would um, meet with uh, a young woman called Becca Dean, who the, um, she was the um, co-chief exec of the charity called the Girls Network, which is a mentoring organisation. Um, and somebody, it wasn't her that approached me, it was somebody she had met had approached me and asked me whether or not I would mentor her, which I did, um, and still do. Um, and uh, when I sat down and, and met with her, it was really just to be open, just like you've heard from the others, to, to find out what it was that she thought she might want from the relationship. Um, when, I'm, when I really thought about what I was doing and why I was doing it, um, I, I was also approached by the University of Sussex to a different programme, I think, to the ones that you talked about. Um, I think it's called the uh, Sussex Business Export Experts Mentor Scheme, and they offered training, um, and I went along to um, their training to, I think, I, I actually haven't mentored anyone on the scheme, but I went along to the training, and it was really useful, I'd really recommend it as a, as a place to go. Um, and of course I was relieved because I found out that the things that I had instinctively been doing were um, exactly what um, they were advising me should be doing, which was just like you've been saying, this isn't about you, it's about them, that you're there as a guide, you're there to listen to what the problems are. Um, they, they had a really useful structure, um, it's called uh, GROW, which is around goal setting, um, so finding out what the focus for them is, reality, where they are now, options, exploring all the different possibilities, and then what the actions, who will do what, where, when, and naming that. And a bit like you said about, I really like your idea about um, holding someone to account because it's a relationship in which you aren't accountable actually but you are a witness to somebody else's journey and I think like in most areas of our life once we say things out loud to somebody else we do feel more accountable. So the, the, the university scheme gave, it gave some guidance really about how you might want to structure sessions and I think um, if you think about what a scheme at a university does, um, universities are, are paid for organisations now, um, structure and control around that mentoring scheme was quite important. That actually isn't how I run my sessions because um, they've been um, more informal. Um, I think in a student in a university situation it would be more useful to be able to have a kind of written record of, of the work that you're doing. Um, Anyway, the work I've done with Becca has been really, um, uh, was really useful for her um, in terms of the journey that she went on and her ability to make a change. And of course, the reason that somebody had approached me was because I had publicly made a change and somebody wanted to find out how they might benefit from that. Uh, Girls Network is slightly different. So um, she would she left the Girls Network actually um, and isn't there any longer. I'm now a trustee of the Girls Network and also a mentor, so I've just, just come to the end of my second year of mentoring. Um, so that's young girls from um, uh, the kind of criteria from a disadvantaged, disadvantaged in some way. Um, and the kind of ethos behind the charity is that you can't be what you can't see, so it links up. Um, girls who've been disadvantaged in some way with professional women um, and it came from um, Becca's experience of working as a teacher where she took a group of girls into um, the city uh, on a, I think it was on an English trip they were going to the, the Globe and the girls said me 
Miss Miss, why is that lady wearing a suit? And she realised that there was a whole cohort, a whole community of young young girls who, who literally had never seen women in working professional environments. Um, so the charity is about five, just over five years old now. And for the women in the audience, I would really strongly urge you to, um, to look into um, um, whether or not there's something that you can offer. It's a much more structured mentoring methodology. Um, you don't have to use the structure, but I think it's quite useful when you're working with vulnerable young people to have, have a structure. Safeguarding is really important, but it can be completely um, transformational. And it, and it goes back to that earlier slide about why me and what you can offer. I found on both in both mentoring journeys, I've had doubts about the value of what I'm adding. But when you get to the um, when you get to the end and you go to a celebration event and you see young women who could barely make eye contact, um, being able to stand up and talk about their experience is really useful. I think there is something for men in Brighton. There's a, 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 a I'll, I'll try and find out the name of it. There's a, something similar that is Brighton based, um, which is <coughs> for men mentoring young um, young men from disadvantaged communities. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, so that's where, how I have found myself as a mentor, either through my network or through those two schemes. Um, Nick White here um, is also my mentee, and I can't remember how you've come to be my mentee. I found you via a conversation with Reba, who suggested you. Okay, there we go. So that's happened, that's happened a few times. So what I thought, rather than me just standing here butchering on about what it's like being a mentor, I would ask Nick to tell you what it's been like. Um, so we've. Uh, 